Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about Venom Beyond Parts 4 and 5, which is the conclusion of this story that Donny Cates is doing. The art in these two issues are by Luke Ross, who actually does a really good job. I've seen uh, Luke's work before and other books, and he's been around for years. And uh, it's kind of neat because uh, he, you know, I don't know if I've seen him do Venom this consistently, and I kind of liked it. So I like the artwork on this, so there will be positives. But of course, it's a Donny Cates book, and so of course I'm going to have criticisms too. So if you don't like hearing me, you know, criticize Donny Cates, if you think everything he does is perfect and uh, and is the best writer in the whole world, you're probably not going to like this video. I know because every time I do one of these reviews for a Donny Cates book, I get thumbs down um, more so than in other videos. <laughs> and so I'm just like, all right, I get it. Some of you guys are hardcore fans and you just don't like listening to me talk negatively about Donny Cates. So in that case, I'd say just skip this episode then if you don't want to watch it. Uh, but a thumbs down and a thumbs up are the same. They help with engagement. So if you want to do that too, that's fine. Um, but we're going to talk about how this book ends um, and we're going to talk about spoilers. So if you don't want any, please turn away now because we're going to go through uh, pretty much, you know, we don't really do reviews here. We kind of do discussions and we just kind of go through what happened in the book and kind of discuss it. So it's not so much like a review. We just kind of go beat by beat through things and try to figure some stuff out. I point out some stuff that, you know, I got from the story, but I always open the comment section up to stuff that you got from the story. And if you have a different opinion than me on anything, I'd love for you to leave it in the comments down below so we can always have a conversation down there for sure. Um, because we are Venom, right? So all of our opinions matter. It's not a show just about me. It's about all of us. And we are nearing 600 episodes. So if you know anyone out there who is a Venom fan and you want to get them to subscribe, please do uh, Please do that because we're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers if we can in the next, you know, hopefully by the end of the year if we can do that. Uh, but it's, it's a big feat. Hopefully we can do it. Um, and if we don't, we'll just keep trying. It's fine. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, so Venom 29, we'll start there with Venom Beyond Part uh, Part. Four, I guess um, they did kind of change the title page a little bit they just inverted the colors so not not that crazy of a design difference um, but I do like the color scheme of like the pink and purple with the white lettering outline actually I like that design more so it's better than just a blank black page with uh, stuff at least the colors here pop a little bit so kind of pulls you in um, but this book picks up Oh, not exactly where the last one left off, but obviously we know that Venom and Dylan are in another universe. So there was a big portal that was made, uh, you know, by the maker, and he found a way to get back to the ultimate universe, which is where he wanted to go. And then this crazy villain named Virus showed up, someone in like a, a you know, almost like a war machine type armor, but mixed in with like, you know, different type of uh, anti-symbiote hardware that might have come from like the jury or other characters like that. And, uh, and so this virus character showed up. We found out who that character was in the last issue, which was Matt Gargan, a former Venom, but also the Scorpion from Spider-Man storyline. And I guess he just wants revenge on Eddie because Eddie left him behind. I don't remember fully what happened in Absolute Carnage. I thought uh, in Absolute Carnage, Eddie left uh, Miles Morales behind in order to save uh, Scorpion. But I guess maybe he grabbed Scorpion and threw Scorpion at the Carnage symbiote people that were like, you know, that were taken over by Carnage. Maybe he threw him back at him to try to save Miles or something. I, I can't remember because <laughs> uh, because I don't I didn't remember, uh, you know, Matt Gargan getting left behind. In fact, I didn't even remember uh, Matt Gargan in that storyline until you guys pointed it out to me because we reviewed the last two issues, 27 and 28. And I was like, yeah, what? I thought the last time we saw Matt Gargan was the Nativity uh, story from Mike, Mike Costa. But all of you guys reminded me that he was in Absolute Carnage, which I'm like, yep, I forgot because I didn't really like Absolute Carnage too much. Um, that book was a blur and we kind of read all the tie-ins, so I kind of got lost in it. And then King and Black is coming up. This is going to tie, you know, lead into King and Black, so we'll get there at the end of the episode. But uh, I will not be buying all the tie-ins for King and Black. I will just be buying the main King and Black story. I'll be buying any of the issues of Venom that tie into it. I will buy the Symbiote Spider-Man miniseries, and I'll also buy the uh, uh, Gwenum versus uh, Carnage miniseries, which is going to be like a Venom, you know, Gwen, Spider-Gwen version um, that's from the comic books. And then we're going to also get introduced to a Mary Jane Carnage, apparently. So uh, I'm definitely going to read that because that sounds like a lot of fun. But all the other tie-ins, I'm skipping. I don't care because uh, there's just too many and I don't have the money and time and energy and patience for reviewing all those plus we'll probably get movie news next year so i won't have time to read every single comic book or whatever so this book when it picks up you're actually in a flashback and you're seeing everything from ann wang's point of view because obviously eddie uh so after you know maker went into the ultimate universe the the portal that he created got damaged 
and Matt, uh, Matt Gargan followed Eddie and Dylan into the portal or knocked them into the portal. And they all ended up in this alternate universe where um, Dylan is a grown up and he is going by the name Codex. And he hears the voice of Null, but it's not clear if in his universe there is a Null or if there's only one Null in all, in, in all the multiverse. Maybe there's only one Null, but yet he can still hear Null's voice from through the multiverse or something like that. We don't really know what's going on um, because I imagine if there was a Null in that world and he could speak to Dylan, he would have told Dylan to come open up, you know, unlock him from Clintar or something. So I'm guessing there might not be a Null in this alternate universe, maybe. So instead, Dylan is in charge. And so now we're going to find out how Dylan became in charge because Eddie also found out that in this world, Eddie Brock is dead, but Anne Weying, uh, who is dead in the main Marvel universe, uh, and Eddie's ex-wife and Dylan's mom, Turns out she's still alive in this world where Eddie is dead. And she's Venom. She's actually Agent Venom. Um, so we get the story from her perspective. It shows Agent Venom and Wang, Agent Venom, uh, taking down Dr. Octopus with Spider-Man's help. And then the two of them are sitting up on a roof afterwards and they're discussing the fact that Anne is pregnant. And she says, yeah, Pete, you know, it looks like they're friends. And I, again, I don't understand the timeline here because if everything was the same except Eddie dying. So, okay, so Eddie never became Venom. Fine, I get that. But Eddie still went to the church to kill himself, which I guess means in this universe he also had cancer, even though Donny Cates retconned that in the main universe. So again, I don't know what Donny Cates is like, <laughs> what's he doing, really? Um, and of course, I'm reading too much into it, so bear with me. Uh, but uh, I guess Eddie went to that church to kill himself. In the main universe, Paul Jenkins reestablished that Eddie went to the church to kill himself because he had cancer and he lost his job and all that stuff. So in this world, he actually did kill himself. He shot himself in the church before the symbiote could even bond with him. And then when Anne went to that church uh, after Eddie killed himself, the suit was there, felt her rage, felt her anger, and bonded with her. In which case I would say, well, then wouldn't that rage and anger be towards Peter Parker? Because if everything still happened the same way, the symbiote would have came down through the church bells from Peter Parker rejecting it. So wouldn't it still have a hatred for Peter Parker? So then why is Anne friends with Peter Parker? <laughs> I don't know, I, you know, but those are little story details and stuff that Donny Cates doesn't like to write because it's too much work for him because uh, he has to get a script out in seven hours and write a whole script in seven hours and brag about it on Twitter. And this is the result of that. Uh, and yes, I'm going to be harsh because I see him brag a lot about writing scripts in a day on Twitter. And it, that bums me out because I'm like, spend more than a day, dude, spend a little bit more time to actually write a story and maybe they'll be a little bit better. But then again, a lot of people like this stuff. So if you don't agree with me, you know, there's the comment section. Let me know what, you know, level of asshole I am, I guess. Um, but I, have, I mean, I like Donnie. He's, and he follows me on Twitter, which was really nice of him, which I don't even use Twitter anymore. Uh, but uh, but he, he seemed like a nice guy. He wanted to come on the show one time and talk to us. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm honest on my reviews. And, and this is the kind of stuff I don't really like in stories is when it's just kind of grazed over and stuff so i don't know why peter and Anne are friends um because i feel like she would have the hatred towards peter and blame peter for eddie's killing himself the way eddie blamed peter i mean Anne's obviously a more rational human being a little bit than uh than eddie so maybe that's the excuse and maybe it just stops there but still i don't know so anyway so she talks about how hey i'm pregnant and then a couple years go by and she has dylan she's raising him as a single parent he's drawing spirals everywhere He's hearing the voice voice of Null, but uh, then she then she finds out he can uh, remote control symbiotes, and that's kind of his power. And so uh, then he can't bond with symbiotes apparently. But then they show like a big war that happened where Anne is like using uh, the the weird tentacle blaster thing from uh, from Venom the End, which all of a sudden they can all use that power now because they're in this universe uh, because Eddie's closer to the hive or whatever, even though he can't be because because there seems to be no null in this universe so how is he closer to the hive i don't get it i don't get it i don't care it's yeah i know i'm not supposed to read this much into it but whatever i don't care um and i just have questions and if there's simple answers let me know in the comments tell me how stupid i am but uh but yeah so they have this this tentacle blaster thing that they use and i'm just like yeah but that's a venom the end thing they clearly explained in venom the end that the the suit had to develop that power and remember how, the combination of how to like make it work or, or create a combination to make it work so the fact that they just have it it just it's clear that you know maybe donny kate saw that happen and then in the end he's like oh we could do that in this book and it's like or whatever i don't know uh that's and i've seen Ed, uh, donny say that in interviews where he's like yeah sometimes i just think something's cool and i do it and i don't 
care about the reason. And that's fine. I mean, hey, if that's his thing, that's fine. Um, but to me, I'm like, yeah, but you're a writer. You should kind of care a little bit because you're getting paid to care. But, you know, when, when he gets to phone it in and it's still the number one selling book, why would he stop phoning it in? So uh, there's no reason to. He would just keep doing that bare minimum um, effort. And, uh, and then, you know, these are the results. So, yeah, I'm harsh on this book because I thought Venom Beyond started off really good. Like a lot of Donny Kate stories, I feel like a lot of hard work goes into the first issues or second, first two issues of a story he's trying to tell. And then by the end, it just feels like uh, deadlines, deadlines, get get them in because of deadlines. Uh, I'm writing an image book and I'm writing this book and I'm writing that book and I get deadlines, deadlines, you know, and that's how it feels sometimes. And and maybe I'm wrong, you know, guy probably he maybe, you know, slaves over these scripts like over and over and over for hours and hours. Could be, but then he goes on Twitter and says, hey, I finished the script today in like eight hours. And I'm like, that, that's a first draft. That's, that's terrible. If I was your editor, I'd be all over you for, for doing that kind of work and then admitting it on Twitter. Um, but whatever. So anyway, so then uh, as Anne's telling this story, sorry, I got an itchy nose. Anne's telling the story to Eddie and, uh, and you know, like, hey, yeah, so I, I raised Dylan. He, he's starting to turn. And then he did turn and he can remote control symbiote. So he put a symbiote on everyone. There was a big great war where all these symbiotes descended, but did no mention of Null. Um, and then Dylan is just in charge and he has Dr. Octopus by his side as his right hand person who was also has a symbiote on him, which is kind of reminiscent of the Spider-Man game where there was like a carnage Dr. Octopus, which was kind of cool. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that episode 600. I've already recorded. Uh, that's our big season finale and, and me and two other people go through um, it's a Venom Vault or Leith Null and uh, Eddie's Mullet. The three of us go through the entire history of Venom and video games, uh, like most of the history. So um, so everyone who wants me to talk about those video games like Web of Shadows and stuff, that's coming up on the show in episode 600. That's our finale for this season. Um, so you'll you'll hear us mention Carnage, Doc Ock or whatever at that point. Um, so anyway, so then at this point, Scorpion shows up who has been given, now that uh, Null had him, or not Null, but Codex, I guess, Dylan. Dylan on this alternate universe grabbed Matt Gargan because when Matt Gargan showed up in the virus suit, he got his butt kicked by the symbiote Avengers who work for uh, Codex. And then they, you know, Codex slash Dylan grabs uh, Matt Gargan, peels off the, the, you know, virus armor, as it were, or, you know, whatever. I think it's revealed in this that it's a War Machine Mark III armor, I think. Uh, and, and the only reason anyone knows that is because there's a Reed Richards here who was friends with Tony Stark and knew the design. So, um, so yeah, there's this weird wacky version of, uh, of Reed Richards that shows up in this, which was kind of fun. I was like, hey, he's silly and his dialogue is way too much dialogue. But I, I kind of liked it because it separated him verbally from other characters where he just rambled and rambled. And I, I don't know, I give Donny Cates credit for that. And there's other some moments coming up that actually I thought Donny Cates did really well too. So this isn't all bashing, obviously. Uh, and I don't hate this book. I'm just kind of like meh about it and that's what i feel i feel like it like meh effort was put in minus the art which i think was really good and but writing wise i feel like it was a meh effort and that's why it's a meh ending to me um so uh so anyway so scorpion shows up he's in this new symbiote scorpion suit that uh codex gave him and he's in it for like a page and a half that's it and then uh eddie turns to dylan and says do it now dylan and dylan you know his dylan not uh codex dylan but his dylan that he brought from his universe uh, just holds his hand out and then separates, uh, you know, Matt Gargan from the symbiote, rips it apart, rips it out of him, um, and it, it just make and kills it and just keeps Matt Gargan alive. And then Eddie grabs Matt Gargan, threatens him, and he says, uh, you know, you know, why are you doing this? Why'd you come after us? And Max says, because, you know, like you left me for dead during absolute carnage, which again, I don't remember it happening that way, but it probably did. I just don't remember. Um, but he's like, you left, you know, you left me for dead and it's bull crap. And, you know, and everything after everything we've been through and everything, I just I hate your guts, I guess. And so Eddie just goes, OK, you know what, Matt, I'm sorry. And he's like, I, I know I'll never you know, be able to apologize for paralyzing you and all these other things that happened to you because uh, because you got your spine ripped out, which, again, wasn't Eddie's fault at all. But I can understand maybe Mac just throwing the blame at him or something, whatever. Sure. Um, but uh, but. But anyway, so he they're sitting there talking and he says, uh, I'm sorry I did that to you. And Mac's like, you know what? Fine. I'll tell you what. I'll help you find Codex and get into a secret base, which I'm like, why would? OK, maybe they need help getting in. But I feel like they would know where it is because it's just a giant tall building in the middle of the city. <laughs> um, but uh, but he's like, I'll help you guys get in. Sure. And then, you know, Venom and Eddie and, all, you know, or Eddie and Agent Venom and everyone and Dylan with his red eyes and Reed Richards and all these other symbiote people with big guns and pouches from the 90s, 
they're all ready to go and invade and fight against Codex, you know. Um, so in issue 30, that's pretty much what happens is uh, Reed Richards starts talking to Mac and says, hey, I can uh, kind of rebuild your suit or we can get access to your suit and uh, I can put robotic attachments on your legs so you can walk and you can lead us into, um, you know, to where Codex is. And so I'm going to help you. And he goes, and then when you get to your suit, these robotic legs will link to your suit. And then, you know, because I know Tony Stark's, uh, Tony Stark's tech and uh, and you'll be bonded with it. And then you can just go about doing your thing and, and help us like win the day. And Mac's like, great. And then, and by the way, this is where I give Donny Cates some credit. At the very last issue here, he actually tries to put in some emotional stuff. It's really sappy because it all happens at the end. It feels like one of those things where you should have fleshed this out a little bit more maybe added another issue to this book but he couldn't because obviously king and black comes out next you know a couple weeks from now so um so he had to wrap it up i guess so whatever it's fine it, it, it works you know it's a little sappy and forced a little bit but it does work it's it's not bad where you have this connection between ann wang and dylan so i know i started off negatively in this episode but for those of you who made it through my negativity you're gonna end with some positivity because this book doesn't end strongly i feel like it's still a rushed forced bad ending for the most part, or meh ending, but these little moments with Dylan and Anne are great because, um, you know, she he goes up and hugs her and she's like, no, wait, don't do it because my Dylan, who's Codex here, when he touches a symbiote, it burns it. Well, this Dylan doesn't burn a, a, her symbiote when he hugs her, so he gives her a hug and, and it's fine, and then she says to him, like, you know, I know you hear Noel's voice out there in the in the you know from the endless space or whatever so does my Dylan he hears it from somewhere and he let it take control of him so I'm telling you when you hear his voice Noel's voice shut it out and remember my voice I kind of like that actually I thought that was really good a little bit Man of Steel Superman-ish you know uh, from that movie when you know his mom said that something similar to him but I still liked it I thought it was a good moment and um and it had heart to it I was like hey that's really good writing actually um but then what they do is this version of dylan they don't want to kill him so when they show up to fight him you know there's a cool scene where venom rides the fantastic car uh from fantastic four he flies it right into the building and he's riding it like a surfboard kind of i thought that was kind of cool it's cheesy and silly but whatever it's fine one of those moments where i'm sure donnie in his head said oh this is cool and i, I actually agree with him <laughs> it's actually pretty cool um so at the end, they go up and they fight Codex. All the team comes together, and the, the Symbiote Avengers are there too. And uh, then Matt Gargan gets his suit back, and he's like, "Yay, I'm going to double cross you, Eddie." And Eddie's like, "What, really? Like after all, after this whole fight, and we finally beat Codex, you're going to double cross me?" He's like, "Yeah, because you know that old story about the the frog and the the scorpion, which is whatever." He's referencing some old uh, story where. Uh, a frog and a scorpion decide to help each other cross like these lily pads or something and the scorpion halfway across kills the frog or whatever because you can't you can't trust a scorpion or whatever i don't know so that's in this this book also and uh and then you know mac is like all right i got the virus suit back i'm gonna take you down but they beat mac up again <laughs> and just like they they arrest him and they actually leave him on this earth to be in jail on this earth so now mac gargan is not even in the marvel universe He's on this earth now forever, I guess, or until they find a way to bring him back. Um, and meanwhile, Eddie and Anne and young Dylan decide to invade uh, older Dylan's mind, Codex's mind, and share all these memories with him, happy memories of uh, Dylan's life growing up with his mom in one world and Dylan growing up with Eddie now for the past however many weeks or months or whatever in the main Marvel Universe. And he shares those, even though I'm like, well, Dylan has a bunch of bad memories because he was raised by an abusive grandfather, <laughs> so like, but but he has but he has a mind full of good memories now all of a sudden because it's convenient for the story, um, and uh, and so anyway so that's what's happening so they they use these great memories to like convince Codex to stop being a bad guy, and uh, and then he separates all the symbiotes from all the humans on Earth and then he dies in Anne's arms. Uh, with because he's her son you know he's from this universe and so I was like well okay it's it's cheesy and silly or whatever but it, it's fine it works I guess and like I said it felt like a little rushed but it's fine it, it, like, again it's not horrible it just feels a little rushed to me um, and these moments that I think are really sweet and tender or could be even though they're sappy could have been less sappy if they had time to breathe and and you know I don't think Donny Cates knows how to do that in stories um, it's just get to the next thing, get to the next thing. We got to wrap this up. So he does so much so that it just next page 
is a waste of a page, really. It says one year later, but it's just a giant blank page that says one year later. I'm like, you couldn't, you couldn't just put that up in a little legend up at the top somewhere. Like, like he, they wanted to really make sure you knew it was one year later, which is like, okay, I get it, but this is a page of art I'm paying for, kind of in the three ninety nine price tag that there's no drawing on. Um, but uh, but yeah, so at the end, after Dylan or Codex Dylan is dead, and an Eddie and this his Dylan. They are now a year older. Uh, Eddie has grown out his hair. His symbiote found a way to make a fake hand for so long to for it to work, right, I guess. Or maybe he's going back to his universe with that fake hand. I, I have no idea. Like uh, that just kind of was a line thrown in there. Like, oh, we got to mention the hand thing. And uh, and so, but they've been together for a year now. And I'm like, well, that right there is an interesting story. But you skipped it. <laughs> you skipped this, the fact that Eddie and Anne from another universe and Dylan get to spend a year together as as husband, wife, and child. That's really great. I'd actually like to see more of that at, at some point. Um, so I hope Donnie comes back to this and shows maybe some of that missing year or if someone writes like a miniseries about it or I don't know. I feel like there's an interesting story in there where these three people might actually get to be happy for a little while. I'd like to read that book. I, I, instead, it's all misery for these characters because that's all writers know how to do anymore is they just like to make things miserable for their main characters. And I want to see some happiness. So there's a little bit of it here, which is nice. But then even after that year, they say months later, this time they don't do a whole page and waste a page on it. They actually put it up in the legend, which they should have done with the one year later thing. Um, but in this one, they find out the Reed Richards of this world, the wacky old guy, he fixed a portal or created a portal much like the one Maker was using. Um, and I can't remember how he said he was using it. I think I think Codex was able to read someone's mind and see what that portal looked like. And then somehow this read got those memories or found out how that worked and something. So he's been spending months figuring out this gateway thing. And he creates one and he sends Dylan and Eddie back to their world. And Eddie does ask Anne to come with them who she's wearing a Venom symbiote and he's wearing a Venom symbiote, like actual Venom. They're both Venom from different worlds. We never get to see those two suits interact because there's no time. You gotta rush the ending, right? Like instead of actually doing interesting things with your characters and story, it's just like, we gotta get it done. We gotta get it done. Get Eddie back to his world. And that's what bothers me. It's like, you have all these things where it's like, we gotta do all these stories before King and Black. Why do a parallel universe story now? Like why not do it later or something? Or why not do it earlier? Like. I don't know, like, or why not have more issues to do it with? It just seemed like such a weird thing to just kind of cram in here and have happen right before the Big King and Black storyline. I, I, that's what I feel like anyway. So Eddie and uh, Anne, at the end, they do share a kiss because there was a point in the story where Eddie says to the villains as they're coming in, he's like, stay away from my wife. And he like, you know, knocks one of them down. And Anne says, remember when you said that? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, she goes, well, I liked it. And so she kisses him and she's like, I know you're not my Eddie, <clears throat> but, you know, I hope you and your Dylan go off and, and change the world and stop this no guy. And and he's like, okay. And he's like, and I hope you find a way to live in harmony here. And I'm kind of like, I don't know why she doesn't go. It's a very mature thing, actually, I, to give Donnie credit, to have them realize you're not my Eddie and you're not my Anne and he's not our Dylan. So we're you stay in your universe, I'll stay in mine. And we can't have two Venoms in the Marvel Universe or whatever. I, it's a kind of a mature decision for these adults as, char as characters, as adults and stuff, can make. So I give Donnie Cage credit for that because it would have been really easy to just be like, as a fan, just be like, ah, just put Anne, just bring her to the main Marvel Universe, have her pass the suit off to somebody else, and then have her go into the main Marvel Universe with Eddie and, and be a wife to him and Dylan. But they're right. They're not the same versions of themselves that they fell in love with, but they did just spend a year together. So, and I'm wondering when they come back to the Marvel Universe, has it been a year and few months in the main Marvel Universe? Does time move like that from multiverses? Or do they get sent back to the, you know, a very soon to the moment they left in? And also, how did they get back? Because I think there had to be, I guess there didn't need to be a gateway on both sides because remember this the gateway was damaged when eddie went through it and that's how they ended up in this random universe which lucky for them they ended up in this universe that was gave them all the answers they needed to get ready to battle king and black i guess so it's a very convenient storytelling too um but uh but that happens in comics so it's you know no fault of anyone's really so anyway so um so you know Anne decides all right i'm gonna stay behind and you guys go off and do your thing and then when Eddie and Dylan get back to Earth, they come out of that warehouse they were in, 
and they look up in the sky and there's no stars and it just says to be continued in King in Black and Eddie's like where are all the stars at um, and Eddie has long hair and a beard a full beard and stuff so yeah just uh, keeping in theme with you know what Donnie does is where every like arc or two uh, Eddie has a completely different look and they're they went through like the shaved head and beard look they went through like um, now the long hair he started off with long hair and stuff like that so they've done different kind of looks for him uh, I think they tried to do the mullet version and they decided against it for whatever reason but uh, but yeah they're just trying to give Don uh, Donnie Donnie's trying to get Donnie and Ryan and all the other artists are trying to give Eddie you know update his look every once in a while just to keep the book fresh and you know kind of keep the the looks of the characters changing and showing you time is passing and stuff like that so it's fine i mean like i said i don't hate this run and there's some moments in here like when you know ann tells dylan listen for my voice you know i'll help you through the darkness all that kind of stuff i'm like hey that's that's neat you know that's uh it's pretty neat and uh, i'm curious to see how that's gonna like that's the setup i'm curious to see the payoff of that like is dylan gonna be in a moment where he's being taken over by Noel and he's choosing to go side with Noel and be like, you know, the his right hand weapon or whatever, you know, and then he's going to, you know, go against Noel. You know, I'm sure that moment's coming and that's great that Anne somehow plays a part in that and that he got to spend time with his mother. Again, I think there's a story there in that year that was missing and I'm, I kind of wish the book was about that story and not about the one we got where Matt Gargan is like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Okay, I'm going to confess this big thing and open my heart up, which is not very Matt Garganish. But I understood the moment. He's desperate and he was, you know, he was beaten big time. And then he makes a deal with Eddie. And then there's a, even a moment at the end where Eddie says, yeah, Mac was right. I was probably going to bring him back to jail anyway. So you guys can just keep him here on this earth and keep him in your jail. And I'm like, really, Eddie? You were just going to, you were just going to go back on your word after you and Mac had this like moment where you're like, you know, you felt like you understood him and you're trying to help him, and then he be betrayed you, sure, but then you were going to betray him anyway, so I don't know, it's just one of those things where it's like, they force these plot points into the dialogue, and I'm just like, it, it, that didn't matter, Eddie didn't need to say that, it, it didn't, you didn't even need to bring up Matt Gargan at the end there, other than him just going like, should we bring Mac with us, and then Anne can say, yeah, one less headache for you, we'll keep him here in our jail, you know, that could, it could have been that simple, and maybe there's already a Matt Gargan in that world, so you know who knows <laughs> maybe there's a dumb scorpion story to be told with two scorpions yeah maybe um so you guys let me know what did you think of this storyline it's fine i mean like i said it's it's a mass story for me i feel like a lot of things were done in the dialogue just to get plot points wrapped up uh that he thought were dangling there and some of them i was like i don't you don't really need to care or focus on these and then other ones i was kind of like you need more time with this and again, that just comes from me seeing, you know, his tweets where he's like, I wrote something in eight hours. And I'm kind of like, well, I can tell, you know, like as someone and that, I know people think I'm like really harsh and stuff like that. I'm harsh on a lot of things. And it's because I've written, I do write, I've edited, I do edit like, I, you know, still like I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I have a different perspective than like a fan. I have the fan perspective, too. But I also have the perspective of, hey, if I worked for a company like Marvel and my name is on a book as an editor or as a writer or something, and I'm getting paid to do it, it has to be my absolute best quality. And so in an interview, even if it was true, I guess, you wouldn't want to, in an interview, say, yeah, sometimes I just write things because I think they're cool, and I don't have any reason why they're in there. He says that constantly. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, it, it makes me feel, and then when he says, I wrote in eight hours, it just feels like, it's not his best effort. It's not his maximum amount of effort he can put into things. And that could be, maybe he's bad at time management. Maybe he has anxiety and he has to get a script out fast and, you know, whatever. But it's like, I get it. I mean, I'm taking forever on a book I'm writing right now. I took way too long for sure. So I commend Donnie for getting stuff out there. That's something I wish I could do more. So a criticism against myself. He's certainly great at that and getting books out there um, and putting his name on a lot of stuff and being prolific in that way. But to me, I I, I want, I, no, nothing's ever going to be perfect, obviously, but you do want things to kind of be your best effort. And that's the thing is sometimes best efforts take more time and he doesn't need to take, you know, two months to write a script. Eight hours just doesn't seem like a lot. It seems like a, a rushed first draft. And I know a lot of people who work in comics that do that. And and I have, when I worked in comics, saw people do it firsthand, and I never liked it. I, I was like, hey, man, your name's on this book. My name's on this book as an editor. We should really work harder at this. Let's work out these beats. Let's spend more time on it. And they're just like, no, just get it out there. Like, get the artist drawing it. We got to get it out, you know, uh, schedule, schedule, schedule. And it's like, yes, that's true. But 
We can spend an extra eight hours and just do one more pass and just talk about a few notes that I might have. And even if you disagree with them, can you at least hear my notes out? And sometimes people say no, and there's egos involved and all this stuff. And and so that's why Key and Black, I'm not going to read all these tie-ins. I'm going to, I read the Empire's End tie-in in the first issue of Symbiote Spider-Man. So we'll talk about those in an upcoming episode. But after that, we're just focusing on Symbiote Spider-Man miniseries, King and Black main series, Venom tie-in issues, and Gwenom versus Carnage. And that's it because Devin Lewis, who's the editor on all these books, um, Absolute Carnage was an absolute pile of shit when it came to continuity. Books, things were happening in some books that weren't matching up with what Donnie was doing in the main book. And it felt like the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing and, and no one cared. And that's on editors. And I, I, I was talking to my friend Gene about this. We're like, remember when Marvel used to have editors that cared about these little threads connecting? And yeah, there was a couple that did in those books, but there was a lot that didn't. And it was frustrating. And now that same editor, Devin Lewis, has come out and said, I want more tie-ins to big events. And, and you see it in King and Black. There's so many tie-ins to King and Black. And I'm like, this guy couldn't handle like 22 or 24 tie-ins during Absolute Carnage. And now he's going to do like 50-something tie-ins? Like, what? Like, those editors are all going to know what each other's doing and this series is going to make sense? Like, no, I don't think so. I think it's I think it's going to get worse with continuity between books, so I don't want to pay for it. So I'm just going to get, like I said, those four books are all we're going to follow, and we'll start reviewing those um, probably. Well, I'll do Empire's End and Symbiote Spider-Man uh, Issue 1. I'll do those this season before the season ends. But King and Black 1 onward until the end, we're going to talk about next season. I'm just going to push them back um, in a couple months, and we'll get into it next season because – you know, I'm not in a rush to get to them, and I want to talk about more Flash Thompson and make sure we finish those books before the season ends. So um, so you let me know what you think of all this, of everything I said in this episode. If you agree, disagree, it's all good. You know, I, again, there's nothing personal here. I don't hate Donny Cates or anything. I'm just critical of his stuff, and I just, these are the things I see. I observe how he, what he posts on Twitter, um, even though I'm not on it much, but I still observe and know what he's posting on there when it comes to that stuff because it pops up in my feed on the few times that I go check on it. And then I also look at the quality of the writing in each issue and where dialogue is shoved in and stuff like that and if this is this is just my perspective and if you have a different one i'd love to hear it and if it if it even if it goes against mine that's cool i'm not here to argue with people or yell at people we are venom all of our opinions are valid here when it comes to this stuff so if you saw this differently and you liked it more than i did let me know down below. And if you hated this book for some reason, like I didn't hate this book. So if you did also let me know in your comments down below, like what you thought of this book. If you like, if you hated it that much, I want to know why. And if you loved it a lot, I want to know why. And we'll continue our conversation down in the comments. So that's it for me for this episode. I got to go because it's like one in the morning. These are the only times I have to record episodes uh, right now because I'm doing a lot of shifts between two jobs. Um, so yes, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to you know, keep my work life and my regular life on track, uh, but I come home late at night, sometimes after working double shifts, and it's the only time I have to record. So I'm trying to get this out there quickly, and I'll try to post it up hopefully this weekend or early next week for you guys. So hopefully, um, you know, it'll get up there in time. I hope. Uh, if I'm behind, though, please forgive me. And I'll, I'll catch up, and we'll finish season uh, four here before the end of the year for sure. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.